How's everybody doing today? Norman Mock Time uh, under the lamp. Uh, we're going to do some fly tying today. So as you can see in the vise, I have a pink tag. So a pattern that has been doing pretty well for me. Uh, especially when you get into these springtime runoff scenarios where you're getting a little bit of influence from some snow melt, a little bit of color in the water, but at the same time you have things like some small stones, even betas, uh, some emerging um, <clears throat> insects like caddis and, and uh, some other mayfly species as well. So nice crossover pattern. Um, silver bead pink tag uh, for the body and I'll go through materials as we get into tying here. So um, yeah, that's what we got going on right now. So let's get to, get to tying this thing. All right, so swapped out that other fly with a bare hook and just a tungsten slotted bead. Uh, the bead is a 2.8 mil bead. Um, and the hook today, we're looking at the XC400. Um, in a size 16. I normally tie these 14, 16s, and 18s, but um, with conditions that are happening right now, uh, with the colder temperatures we've had, uh, the flows have dropped somewhat and cleared up. So, you know, going to 16 or an 18 would do just fine uh, as far as getting sink rate and uh, uh, all that. So, uh, you go much bigger, and it could be fine, um, but you know, just uh, you you may be too heavy in some of that water. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So let's get started. We're running some 14 knot Vivas in black. See that? So we'll just get this going on the hook shank here. Thread base. Trim away your tag. Let's get that set in there. Now for the pink tag, AKA the tail on this thing, uh, we are running glow bright. And um, so just to show you here, I'm gonna take a strand of the glow bright and we're using glow bright number two, which is a basically a fluorescent pink. Um, and what I do is I just take a single strand and I will Basically double it on itself. Oh, so you see I doubled it there. I'm gonna double it again. So basically you got four strands of this material, just like so. And then at that point, I will go ahead and trim all this. That way I get um, my material. So that's pretty much that. So I don't need a whole lot, um, just enough to give you basically the effect of a tail. And then I'll tie that in, matching the end of my material right at the base of the bead so I'm not having to trim away any excess tag or any excess material. I'll come in and my tail length is roughly about body length. And then I'll set my um, excess aside. That way I can use it on other other flies. So I'm tying mul multiples of these so I can have these to guide with. And then I am actually going to use some silver small ultra wire. That right there. Tying this on my side. And I'm going to go ahead and just, again, butting the tag right up against the base of the bead. Once again, I don't have any extra to cut away. And I'm going to go ahead and build up my thread right behind the bead. Give it a little wiggle so that way it seats properly and doesn't move anymore. And then bring my thread back to the base of the tag or tail. And for the body, I am using... Peacock eye stub in black, or peacock black eye stub, <laughs> and you give yourself a fair amount. Um, this is building the body. Peacock or eye stub in general can be a little difficult to dub, but uh, I find I don't need the wax as long as you give it a good pinch, maybe moisten your fingertips, and. Um, yeah, just be real aggressive and, and uh, 
it, when you pinch and dub there. So just dubbed it right up to the base of the bead. If I had excess, I would have trimmed that or pulled that away and uh, saved that for later. And I'll show you what I would have used it for. So go ahead and take your wire. We're going to create a rib here and one full turn, basically right at the base and then start pull, pulling forward. So one, two, three, four, you should end right at the base of the bead. That's preferable. So I'm going to bring my thread up, pulling on my wire away from me as I bring my thread up. But then I will actually, once I got my thread on the uh, back of the hook here, you can see I'm kind of pulling away with the thread. Now I can bring my wire and pull it into the thread back towards me. And then I'll just really lock it in and give it one, two, three turns and I'll give it a couple turns in front and that helps lock it in because when you go to rotate and uh, twist that wire off it's not going to go anywhere so I'll just back off a turn uh, that way <clears throat> I am good to go for the next section so as you noticed or as you saw it did have a soft collar on there so we're just going with um, some trout hunter uh, natural dark done in the uh, for the uh, CDC hackle so I found me a nice little plume you can see I already used some there and uh, we'll go ahead and just pull away a couple fibers here oh I'd say about yeah maybe an inch of material take my tool so I'm gonna pinch it about and find yourself with some uh, material that's fairly long because I do want this material to, to to reach all the way to the base of the tail if not even to the end of the tail if, if not a few stragglers that would be longer so once I got it locked in there hold the clip tight and then rip my material away and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim these little uh, velcro type ends away that way they're not hooking each other Boom, it's all set to go. I'm gonna set that to the side for right now and then I'm gonna create my dubbing loop. So I take my my uh, thread, oh, get you back in focus. I wanted to zoom out here. So I'll show you, but I basically extended my thread out pretty long. I'm gonna double loop it around my fingertip and then bring my thread over the top and then I'm going to spin my thread around my newly formed dubbing loop. So I just did a turn around and then over the top. Hopefully that's in, in focus there. So I got one and I can do another one if I want, but usually one is just fine and then make a couple turns over right at the base of the collar. Okay, so that's my Dubbing loop, I'm gonna unspin it so it's nice and open all the way up to the base of the fly. Let me get you zoomed back in here, back into focus. Okay, now I can take my Petajon tool, set the material right into the loop, right up against the tool, and pinch my thread tight. Now try to line up the thread here so that way your, your material doesn't go anywhere. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of spread it apart because I wanna be able to get at least a couple turns out of there. I'm gonna take my dubbing whirler, hook that into my loop, and it spins with that rotary function. So it'll twist up your CDC. Take a little Velcro strip or whatever you have, a little dubbing brush, and I'm just gonna tease out that CDC because it does twist and bind down and I want it to be free so I can create that soft tackle and I'm going to take my hackle plier just I'd usually take my thumb and forefinger and run up the the dubbing loop to tighten it up even a little more and I usually normally eliminate the dubbing tool because the rotary tool is just too long too bulky so go ahead and start stroking that material back towards the tail just like you would a soft tackle feather and then every turn just pull it back so all your material now is facing towards the tail in a nice um, 
orientation like a soft hackle feather. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a couple turns, lock it down, and then get a turn in front of my dubbing loop tag. Trim that away. And just see where I'm at. So I got one really long one there. I'll just go ahead and trim it down, not quite all the way to the tail. Again, I do like a little um, long uh, tag here and there. And so right now, I'm about to finish this off. I'm going to go ahead and take the peacock curl, and I'm taking just a really light amount of uh, peacock dubbing. Um, because I'm just going to add this right at the base of the bead, essentially hiding um, the thread. Um, you know, I want as much of a nice finish on the collar, basically utilizing the tying material. But I'm going to leave myself a little gap right here. Take my UV resin. I think you've seen this on the red butt video. I'm just going to dab it right on the thread before the uh, ice stub. So you got it right there. And I got my extended whip finisher. And so I'm going to go ahead and whip finish the resin on first. And then that basically is followed with the dubbing material. Once I got the dubbing material, I'll do one extra turn, and then I'll finish that, and then bring in at least two or three more turns on top of that just to help uh, secure it and make sure I'm locked in place there. Pull down, that way I know I'm nice and tight. Trim my thread away. Take my light. And then set my UV resin. And whatever is exposed, as long as you hold your light on it for several seconds it'll set give it some exposure time okay that's it so that is the pink tag i like to fish this again dry dropper euro nymph tight line nymph uh you can definitely swing it out um dead drift it's a great versatile pattern uh definitely worth having in the box uh, i've been fishing this a lot since about 2000 13, I think is when we were in the Czech Republic. That's where uh, this little gem came from. So those checks, they know how to tie some flies that catch fish. So anyway, that is your pink tag. Enjoy. We'll see you under the lamp next time, but even better yet, hopefully we'll see you out on the water. All right, all thanks for watching. You know where to find me please hit that subscribe subscribe button if you already haven't and uh, hit the bell for the notifications, get all the latest in videos. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, the social media. And if you're not a Patreon member, please become a Patreon subscriber as well. Um, become part of that NMOC time of fly fishing team where um, your, your donations, your sponsorship will help pay for uh, some of these adventures as well as new materials new tools new gadgets that I can demonstrate and show you all so all right appreciate it take care